Hello, I'm Colonel Failure, and this is Train Fever. Mmm. Uh, what are we watching at the moment? Uh, so this is an A4. We built, uh, we bought a couple of these in the uh, in the last episode, and they are magnificent. Uh, the the capacity they've got is uh, is 90. We've got two of them in service at the moment. I think the other one's only got a capacity of about 70 some odd. Um, but these are the future. Uh, these are what are going to. These are what are who are going to drive us forward. Um, into uh, into future profitability and uh, and greater expansion. Football pitches. Then you, splendid. Um, sorry, I got I get distracted by things that I haven't seen before. So uh, in the last episode, we didn't really do much. Uh, I replaced a couple of trains. Yeah, big whoop. Um, but uh, but I started umming and ahhing a little about uh, about what the next plan is going to be. Uh, now the obvious thing is to is to expand, and, and obviously at some point we're going to uh, we're going to expand to hit every city, every town on the map, uh, and and service them all by trains. It should be quite a sight to see. How long it's going to take us to get there, who knows? But it should happen at some point. So this is the uh, I think this is Bex Rip coming in now. Sixty six passengers waiting. Absolutely lovely. There we go, another 200 grand. Uh, let's have a quick look at the routes to see what's making money right now. Uh, we'll, we'll separate by different mode of transport. Tewkesbury Iron is still woefully, woefully inadequate. Um, but it is it is picking up now. So it's currently got... Let's uh, over there and have a look. It's currently got 20. It's current, carrying 20 iron, um, which it will be paid handsomely for. Pay me handsomely for all this iron, you wretch. Thank you. 61 grand. It's because it's not traveling very far. Uh, if it was traveling a little bit further or carrying a little bit more, uh, you know, we'd be uh, in a much better place. Let's see how much they've got in stock. I know this is already starting to feel a lot like the, the previous episode. Trust me, I have plans. Uh, the Havertooks Express is currently running a deficit. That's uh, a little bit uh, uh, interesting. Why is that? I suspect it's because we've got trains now with greater capacity um, and they move faster, so we don't actually have the time to, to, to build up passengers that are waiting. But I'm a big believer in building for the future. Uh, so you build in such a way that uh, when demand catches up with supply, this of course goes completely against what I was saying in a previous episode where we never wanted to exceed demand. But hey, it'll work out. Um, yeah, so overall, we're not making money quite as fast as we have done in the past. But last time around, I spent the entire episode umming and ahhing with this regard uh, about, oh, what are we... So we're going to make some... Yes, and this is going to... And all of that kind of ponderous rubbish that you've come to expect. But I thought we'd talk a little bit about plans. So, without further ado, let me unfurl the map. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a, is a basic topology... Of, uh, of the map as we have it right now. Um, so, starting out at Tewkesbury, which is uh, down there in the uh, in the, the bottom right, and uh, moving to uh, Haverhill, uh, as you can see, those are linked by a uh, train line. So I have marked basically every town on the map in a, in a kind of vague approximation to where they actually live. Um, and, uh, and I've got the, the links on there, along with uh, a couple of initials just to indicate which line is currently servicing them. So, uh, geographically, you know, this isn't to scale, uh, obviously, um, but what it is is it does give a kind of vague position. It doesn't take into account mountains or rivers or anything along those lines, but it does give you a, a, a basic idea of, uh, of where the obvious routes are. Um, so I think, you know, right now we're, we're running... Uh, Tewkesbury to Haverhill, Haverhill to Bexhill, uh, Bexhill to both Bromsgrove and Ripon. Uh, the the low hanging fruit there, in terms of uh, of, of obvious obvious routes, would be to go Bromshill, uh, Bromsgrove, Bexhill, and then Ripon, and then back and forth, and, and run those trains both directions, uh, in order to uh, potentially drive a little bit more traffic. But 
More importantly than that, it means that you can run more trains on the same lines. So instead of running effectively two trains shuttling back and forth between Bexhill and Ripon and Bexhill and Bronzegrove, you could run three trains running the entire circuit. So there should always be a train in each station. Does that make sense to everybody? Right, so that's the that's the basic principle. Is if, if you work on one train per station, then you should be able to maintain a relatively happy flow. But then, of course, you can start going in in uh, in opposite directions, or you can you can run it effectively like a loop. So uh, you go Ripon, Bexhill, Bromsgrove, Bexhill, Ripon. That's fine, but Bexhill gets too much traffic in that. Now, both Bexhill and Bromsgrove are pretty sizable. Uh, in terms of their population, they're both doing quite well and they're both delivering decent numbers of passengers, which is more important. So I think what I'm going to try and do is run up to uh, Great Torrington up there in the, uh, let's call that the northeast. Uh, we'll go up to, to Great Torrington and we'll go there either out of Bromsgrove or out of Becks Hill and then we'll make a four station route. Yeah? So instead of three, we'll make four stations uh, from Torrington, Bromsgrove, Bexhill, Ripon, and then back again. And we'll figure out quite quickly what the right number of trains is to run on that route. Does that make sense? Okay, so we have a plan, and that's a good place to start. Uh, a, a plan is always somewhat handy. Um, before we get to there, we have had a request to name the tram, and... Uh, the tram is being named Wolfman, accordingly. Would anyone like to ride on Wolfman? Yes. Come to Bromsgrove, it's the place to ride on Wolfman. Um, splendid. Uh, the tram is yet to be profitable, but it will be at some point. Not to worry. Okay, so, if we're going to expand into Bromsgrove, into Bromsgrove, from Bromsgrove to Great Torrington, uh, which, is, which is actually pretty exciting because it allows us the, uh, the Ripon, Bexhill, Bromsgrove, Great Torrington kind of back and forth. And I can I can already envisage uh, doing something exciting there. So first things first, let's uh, let's have a quick look at the, uh, the elevation difference. It looks like it's all uphill all the way to Great Torrington, but there aren't any surprise hills or, uh, or chasms in between here and there. So that in itself should be pretty straightforward. Right, business as usual. Let's uh, let's look at sorting the roads out, so that we can have a, a nice easy, a nice easy docking position. You know what might work? What might work is is if we drag this out here, right? And then I'm thinking we go station. Brace yourselves. It's you know this is a this is a, an idea and a half. So if we go two two track in there, then that is more or less, I better, better double check, you know me, if I don't double check I'll do it wrong. More or less a straight line straight down to, to Bronzegrove. I like it. Right, let's, uh, we only want two tracks but we do want max platform length to, uh, to give it that uh, future proofed goodness. It is also a little, a little out of town at the moment. So maybe if we go this side of the track and then we can go a little closer. That is quite a, quite a big cut and that's a million quid for that station. Give me alternatives here. What about here? Oh, 218k. That's cheaper. Thank you very much. I do maths. Uh, yes, that is cheaper. Right, and I built it. That's that's paid for. That's that's mine. I've uh, I picked that one up. Uh, I think we'll probably go trams here as well rather than buses. Uh, they just feel a little bit more advanced, and obviously the capacity is higher. Uh, do we want to go there? Yes, we do. But then we also we want to encourage a little bit of build out this way. There we go. This is all standard, standard stuff. I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm okay. I'm comfortable leaving these, these spurs of road just hanging out, going nowhere, uh, because some fool at some point will uh, we'll go build a house at the end of it. But let's, uh, let's continue, uh, continue walling these in, as it were. Yeah, yeah, this is all good. 
Actually, this place is showing oh, yeah. potential for good growth. Oh, what have we got? Lots of new stuff. That's a that's a brand new type of bus. And a, an E94. And a big goods wagon. And another big goods wagon. Hmm. All right, I'll give those a little bit further. In fact, what I'll do is, uh, before I forget, let's... Let's set the Bexhill Circle up to replace with uh, with those swanky new buses. Let's have a look. The Sora Tusha, which can handle 13 passengers and a, a rip-snorting 55 kilometers an hour. Okay, there we go. That's all yours. Replace yourselves when you're good and ready. What else have we got going on here? We're still running a Landauer on Haver Circle. Uh, let's change the replacement vehicle. And I, I'm all about using the most up-to-date stuff available. I mean, we're in 1940, and uh, and this Aboag will last until 1965. Or it was, you know, it'll be produced until 1965, which is cool. But let's go for this, because, uh, you know, 30-year 30, uh, 30 lifespan, I'm all about that. Uh, anybody else for the time being? No, we'll leave that alone. Get back to work on your train track. Okay, so we've uh, we've built the circuits around Great Torrington. That's fine. And then we want to go down to Bromsgrove. So, we're going to try and do this uh, in a, a civilized, genteel fashion. I also need to be thinking about... Do I, do I need to be thinking about... I do definitely need to be thinking about... Electrification. What am I going to run on here? That's quite a quite a hefty cut. Maybe we can can we go up a little more? And well, that's got a bad idea written all over it. But that's far as there. Okay. Onwards, onwards, onwards. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I quite like the the track laying system that it thinks of uh, of what you're what you're thinking of doing. Uh, but that does lay, lead you to some, some wacky, excessive hills being fabricated. Which, uh, while they serve the purpose at the time... Okay, you're going flat. Hmm. Now the question is, is it going to be cheaper... Okay, let's let's go a really short distance. All right, and then just up a smidge. There we go. So you're on the flat, which should mean the rest of this is cheaper. Down, please. Thank you. Good. Okay, nice. I also possibly ought to be thinking about high speed track at some point because uh, you know the the future is going to bring engines that really aren't uh, bring locos trains engines uh, that really aren't suited to this uh, this old school Victorian stuff but that's not a concern I have right now this minute the concern I have right now this minute is can I complete this track without doing my usual hemorrhaging of every penny I've got and this really is the best way to do it short sections at a time while trying to ensure you're staying something approaching straight and look at this wiggling along here uh, you know if you've got all the money in the world the temptation is going to be to uh, just brute force your way through the landscape but as mentioned it doesn't have to make a mess in the process and we are a, we are a tidy rail company I don't want to do it that short. It's because we're on an incline. That's, I mean, that's the the main problem we've got. Because we are, uh, we, because we are heading uphill. The tracks are a little bit of a loss to decide uh, exactly what we want to do. Let's go as far as there. And yeah, okay. We'll We'll cut. I don't want to, but we will. Right, let's come down the other direction. Meeting yourself in the middle is also not a bad idea. Because uh, it means that they should get to... In fact, let's uh, let's try it now and see what kind of wackiness we end up with. So that's 
that's part of half a million. But look, I mean, we've we've built a put a ruddy great wall in the process. So uh, nope. It's easy way to describe that. Right, can you go as far as here? Let's try and keep it so that its max speed is 120. That's good. It's still going down. Do we need to go down this time? No, we don't. This is going to lead to a track that uh, that undulates gently. But there's. Uh, it's with the real world, you would be able to uh, to find a gradient that would work. And no, not quite. Another one? No. To there, and then to back here. Yeah. Of course, building a second line alongside it, so if you want to run parallel lines, is going to be much more straightforward because uh, you've already done much of the the heavy lifting. That's nice. That's that's working working just right. Let's go as far as there. Again, just right. And then finish it off. Why have we got a hump in here? No, let's go from here. Let's make it so it's actually pointing towards where we want it. Okay, slight hump, but I'm... Look at that. Look, see, that's what you end up with if you don't concentrate. If I take that out, how much of the track is it actually going to end up nuke? I mean, to be honest, the track itself is relatively inexpensive. Yes, it's always preferable to get it right first time. No, you don't want to turn off to the side. That was... I, I know, I, you know, how picky can you be? Alright, and then it's built a longer hump and then it's got a ditch there as well. I'll oh, cry out loud. I know, get me wrong, this is, the, I mean, it's actually a really flexible system. There we go. But in trying to anticipate what it is that you want, it builds some stuff that, are, that is basically daft and is, and is unnecessary. Uh, let's, uh, Let's level this out. There we go. The good news is I started this with three million in the bank, and we're now up to five million in the bank. So uh, I am I'm comfortable, comfortable with that. There we go. That looks that looks like I just put another hill in. Oh, you know what? I'm okay with it. No, do it once and do it properly. I'm not okay with it. And we need to get rid of you. Seriously, you're going to just be here all day doing this. Right, okay, here we go. This time, perfect. Okay, so that's a slightly more elongated and genteel hill. We'll take it, that'll be fine. All right, a slightly wiggly track. Uh, I think you'll agree, and it still has a hump in the middle of it. Um, but when it comes down to it, we have uh, we have completed what we set out to complete. So next, let's uh, let's mirror this down. I'm quite excited to be uh, to be going back into double tracking again. Hopefully, by running these in by running this this particular loop, we're going to be going to be incredibly profitable. Well, it's not a loop, is it? It's a, it's an end-to-end, -end, but this is a this is a four-station system. It might be just a, an enormous an enormous unnecessary risk. Look at that, it's ridiculous. That's where they hid the bodies. More than likely it is. Okay, uh Oh, I hope I'm building on the right side of this track. I'm sure I am. Okay. And 
There we go. Excellent. I think I possibly will electrify it all. Uh, electric trains seem to have a little bit more tractive effort than their, their steam counterparts. But we'll find out about that next time. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, next time around, we're going to, to make this live. You know what? It would have been sensible to hook this up onto the other side. Where is that actually going? That and other questions will be answered next time I see you. I've been Colonel Failure. Please do leave a like and subscribe as though you really, really want to. And uh, I'll catch up with you next time. Cheerio.